Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today it's time to talk about Golden Demon or at least my Golden Demon entries. Let's get into it. The, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique in Learned Vinci V. As you watch this it is currently Saturday of Adepticon. Hello in the future. Uh, I am currently, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, in Chicago. I've put my entries in the case and I don't know what's going to happen with them. I guess we'll see. Uh, and in fact, there will be a future video uh, wherein I kind of recount my journey, my experience, and what ultimately happens with it. But today, I wanted to take a look with you at my entries, talk about them, talk about what led me to them, the work that went into them, and yeah, just kind of share with you some really fun projects I'm pretty proud of. As I always say, and I mean it, you can't go to a competition like Golden Demon expecting to win something. The miniature you make, the piece of art you craft, that is the prize. Regardless of a little plastic trophy you get, in the end, you have created something that is yours and yours alone. You have the only one of those in the world. As a point of fact, there are many Golden Demon trophies around. But the piece of art you create, that miniature that you painted, the blood, sweat, tears, and life that you put into it, that, that is yours and yours alone. And regardless of whether others recognize it or value it or uh, award it, doesn't actually matter because you should. It was your work. And so in that light, I want to look at these things and talk about what I like about them and why they were fun to do and uh, why I ultimately put them into Golden Demon. Let's take a look at some entries. All right, let's begin here in AOS single figure. Uh, so this is the High Gladiatrix from the Daughters of Cain. Uh, with single figure entries, I always try to, to push them to the absolute highest level because they have to be. But at the same time, I basically never expect to win. Single figure is always the most difficult category. It always has the largest number of entries, uh, and it's always the easiest to just be, you know, unfortunately outshone on. Almost no matter what you do, you could just run into three other straight killers that push you out. But this was really an attempt to, to push myself to do something in what I call full skink mode, uh, which was, you know, really looking at last year and the incredible piece um, that was done uh, of, of the skink. That guy was absolutely off the charts amazing. And so I wanted to see, you know, could I push myself in the same way with ultra clean painting? And so this is really an experiment in both that style of these soft, very subtle, very smooth blends, uh, but also in uh, looking at, uh, you know, making sure that everything is executed to the highest technical level of cleanliness. Um, so that's what this one was an experiment in. Now, I don't particularly have any high hopes for this one. Uh, as usual with these, I'll give a, you know, sort of a one out of t or X out of 10 of my chance of pulling home a demon off of this. Uh, X out of 10, zero. Uh, this will not win anything, uh, but that's okay. I'm still very proud of it. And it was a good learning. Next up, we have AOS Unit. Uh, this is actually one of the most recent things I finished. Um, this is my Ogroid Theradon unit. Um, I am very proud of these guys. And I, want, I put them next because it's a good story about how learning builds on learning. Working on that high gladiatrix and refining a lot of my techniques, my cleanliness, my approach, uh, led me then to feel more confident when I attacked these guys. Now, they are a lot more real estate. There's a lot more going on with them, and they're a lot more complicated and big figures. But I really feel like I managed to achieve a pretty nice uh, level with them, really pushing all of my time and effort and treating each of these like a single figure with an incredible amount of effort, probably 250, 300 hours into this unit all told. So I felt like I got to a really good place with them, and I'm quite proud of where they came out. And it was because of that learning. Next up, 40K single figure. This is an Imperial Fist I actually did some time back, but I pulled him back out and upscaled him into a competition entry. I'd always kind of wanted him to go to competition, but just never really had the chance. So this was an interesting opportunity to take him out, dust him off as it were, and really apply uh, a, you know, a lot of learnings to him. So going back and tightening things up, cleaning things up, making sure that all of the blends were hyper smooth. I would guess I put another, I don't know, probably 12 to 15 hours into the blade 
uh, you know, just as a, a simple example of one area of this guy. Um, reinforcing and softening some of the warm shadows and cold shadows. Just very lots and lots of time doing very small, very simple techniques uh, that just help keep the overall miniature looking clean, effective, efficient, and delivering, uh, you know, sort of the vision that I had for it overall. Um, I really wanted, I also rebased this piece. So I originally had it on a much larger base, but I did a resin pour, and the resin pour came out like crap. I spent a lot of time on that base, uh, trying to make it look really, really cool and unique and interesting as a scene. But I realized, one, the base is way too big for the figure, so it was already in the wrong place. And two, I realized that uh, it looked bad because the final step I did, which was the resin pour, didn't go correctly. And so the right answer was pull him off that base. And so I got rid of him off of that base and uh, put him onto a new base that, that felt more in line, especially with the non-metallics that he's, he's done in, um, that carried through that theme. Um, and I like the image now. It looks cleaner. He looks much more tight. Uh, oh, once again, chances on him, uh, definite zero out of 10. The Ogroids have got a shot, uh, maybe a three out of 10. But I'm happy with him, and I, he was great learning. Next up, small scale. Uh, I say that jokingly. This is the most ironic thing that I could have called somebody uh, because this thing is, in fact, the same size as a regular Imperial Knight. Uh, but, of course, it's it's way scaled down because to scale in 40K, this thing would be absolutely massive. Uh, and, but this is part of Adeptus Titanicus. I had done this piece a long time ago, um, but again, pulled him back out, um, went over all the flames, smoothed a lot of that out, sharpened things up. Um, redid all of the banners on him because frankly they looked like absolute crap and so I just painted over them and started over from fresh and it took me oh gosh writing that text I'm still not super thrilled with it but it looks okay and it took me you know 20 25 times rewriting that text to get it to where I wanted it sometimes the real trick to golden demon is just being willing to absorb the pain of being like yep nope yeah nope yeah nope I also completely redid the plasma uh, guns, completely re sort of coloring and shaping them. So just a lot of little small touch-up work, some additional weathering, minor components like that around him to make him feel a little, have a little more variation. Uh, just a lot of cleaning, crisping, and some complete redoing. Uh, so I like this guy. Again, maybe a, I don't know, one or two out of ten chance to pull something home. He's, he's pretty exciting and visually compelling, so he was real fun to do. Ah, yes. Now we come to AOS Monster. Um, we'll call this guy the Great Purple Hope here. Uh, I really love this guy. I think he's my best entry for this year, which probably means he won't win anything ever. Uh, that's usually how this goes. Whatever I think I did the best job on is generally the thing that, that, uh, that does the worst. So we'll see if history repeats. Um, but I'm very proud of this guy. Uh, this was really an experiment in a lot of different new techniques. It started out as sort of a journey of painting like Sam Lenz, like using his exact technique uh, for how he manipulates his paint and kind of just spun into a journey of doing this Golden Demon entry out of him. Um, he's a really fun converted piece. I'm very happy and pleased with the base and his sort of integration and color tone and the way he works with it. And overall, I'm just really, really thrilled with this piece and, and how it came out. I think it's very unique and different. Um, so he's my great hope. Um, you know, if uh, if I had my way, I would I would love to see him pull a trophy. I think, you know, at best, at best, this is probably my strongest entry. And at best, I'd still give it like a four out of ten chance of doing anything. Um, but, you know, working the, the metals and adding a lot of different tone to them and treating them in a non-metallic fashion, working the cloth, the lighting being really, you know, interesting and vibrant while still maintaining that saturation. This one was really a challenge in a lot of ways, and I'm very, very pleased overall with how it came out. I tried to put a lot in here for the judges to discover from, you know, the minor mud and elements and weathering and powder that's stuck into the links of the chains um, to the very small micro details on things like the skulls and in his, his body and frame and stuff like that. I really wanted all of the little wonderful details of this guy to be picked and pulled out. And so I lavished a lot of love, a lot of time on him, and I'm hopeful with what ends up happening with him. I guess time will tell. Uh, but this guy got certainly a lot of effort. He is a easily a multi-hundred hour piece. 
and he also represents a new and different way I worked on him. Um, I didn't work on him straight through. Instead, this guy, I started him about a year ago, worked a lot, then stopped, then worked a lot, then stopped, and repeated, each time coming to it with fresh eyes and seeing new things to correct, to push. So I might keep a piece always in progress like that. It was a very good learning experience to always have something. Lastly, 40k vehicle, uh, Bane Lash. This was made specifically for Golden Demon and has been a dream of mine for a long time. This, of course, is meant to be the very, well, famous to me at least, uh, Fallen Knight out of uh, 40k, which is Bane Lash. It fell to Slanesh, to the Dark Prince. Uh, and I wanted to capture something that was truly Slanesh and truly Bane Lash here. And the, the little whippy arm piece that came with the Knight Abominant uh, allowed that to happen. Um, as I developed this piece, I realized that the Flamer, which because this guy was armed with a little Flamer and a his whippy arm in, in the lore. And the whippy arm was on his left hand, but only the... Uh, but the flamer for chaos doesn't work on the left arm, so I had to use an imperial flamer. And then when I used the imperial flamer, I was like, huh, wait a minute. What if we do a sort of hermaphroditic slanesh thing where the left half of the model is all of the imperial armor plates and accoutrements? So the flamer, the shoulder pad, the leg plates, the smokestack, all of that is imperial. Or, sorry, the right half. And what if the left half is all chaos? And so that's what I did. I thought it harkened to Slanesh. Slanesh often has this bisected down the middle aesthetic. Um, I, you know, that face mask just speaks to it completely with the um, Imperium side versus the Chaos side. And I really obviously put a lot of time into this guy. I have a whole video where you can see how I put this thing together and painted it. Uh, but this was just an incredibly rewarding project. I've painted a lot of Imperial Knights. I try to put a lot of time and love into them. Um, I pride myself on being, uh, I hope, uh, a good painter of, of Imperial Knights um, and it being something that I'm known for. And this one was, again, another chance to continue to, to push my skills. And I, I would be thrilled after last year. Um, you know, I really had a lot of hope for that one and it didn't pan out. Um, this year, I feel like Bane Lash has an interesting chance. It's good. It's in the lore. It's Warhammer. It's uh, it's something really I hope that the judges recognize as being part of this classic aesthetic. And uh, we'll see how it does. Three out of ten. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like these entries. I hope I'm having a fun time in Chicago. And I hope if you're there right now with me, you've stopped and said hi. If not, do so. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, if you've got any questions about anything, hey, drop those down in the comments below. Always happy to help. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do so. There's a Patreon link down there. You can click that and uh, you can join and take your next step on your hobby journey. Whether that's toward a competition like Golden Demon or just for your own personal armies, it's review and feedback and help and a great community. So with that, I'll say thank you so much. I appreciate you watching. And as always, we'll see you next time.